I'm going to go over the basic usage of Twixter in Final Cut Pro 10. We will start with a simple speed up effect and then we'll go over a basic slowdown so when we're finished you'll have an understanding of how to use Twixter in Final Cut Pro 10. I will cover the steps to take in each scenario so you can apply them to most simple shots. Let's take a look at the clip that we'll use for our example so you can see the original speed before we retime it. In this first example, we're going to start with a simple speed up. Twixter does this by purging and or creating new frames based on motion and speed up factor. As a result, the footage is shorter. For example, a two second clip when made two times faster or 200% becomes a one second clip. I'm going to start a new project and base the size on the first clip. We could also make the project a custom size. Now let's go ahead and drop our clip on the timeline. I can now add Twixter to our source clip. I'll make sure the effects browser and the inspector are open. I will select the clip and add Twixter by dragging it to my source clip or by double clicking on the Twixter icon while the source clip is selected. You can see once I've added Twixter to the selected clip, it shows up in the inspector. We can retime using frame number or a speed percentage. In this case, I'm going to use speed percentage. I'm going to go ahead and make this clip three times faster or 300%. So I enter 300 in the dialog box. I will also make sure the display is set to Twixtered output so I can see the Twixtered result. I'm going to leave everything else on the default settings for this basic speedup. Now if I skim through the clip, you can see that since I sped the shot up, it's just holding for the duration of the shot. If I trim the original clip with Twixter directly, it will shift in time. Or it may stop too early due to the way Final Cut Pro 10 works with plugins. And that wouldn't be good. So there's an easy workaround. I can create a compound clip out of the source clip plus Twixter and then trim that compound clip and not the original plus Twixter. To do this, we can right click on the clip and select New Compound Clip or Option G for a shortcut. This makes a compound clip with the source clip inside it. The compound clip gives a safety shell so that the Twixtered clip won't shift around in time when trimming the compound clip or transitioning to or from the compound clips with a dissolve and such. Since we don't want to edit the clip where Twixter is applied directly as I just mentioned, we will go back to the main timeline by selecting the arrow or command plus the left bracket. Now I can just grab the edge and drag it to where I want it. If we go back inside the compound clip by double clicking, you can see where the parent compound clip has been trimmed in the timeline above. Let's look at the result. You can see how easy that was to make this clip three times faster. Now let's see how to do a slow-mo. I've already created a new project. However, this time, I will make a compound clip first out of the original clip to be Twixtered, and then open the compound clip and add Twixter to the original clip. This gets us to the same setup as we did in the speed up example, but we've just reversed the order of operations. Note that no matter how you perform the setup, Twixter should always be added to the source clip directly, and then the clip with Twixter should not be edited directly but included in a compound clip or shell that you trim and transition. I can select the clip and double click on the Twixter icon to add it to the clip. And I'm going to use the speed percentage again and this time I'm going to slow it down by a factor of four. So I'll make it 25%. 
Again, I'll leave the display on Twixter to output. We can skim through the timeline and see that the clip is not long enough to accommodate the slowdown. This is because plugins are not allowed to alter the length of the clip in Final Cut Pro, so we'll need to add more duration to the clip using Final Cut Pro's ability to hold a frame. Note, we can't just retime the clip and stretch it out, or Final Cut Pro will try to retime the clip on its own before handing the frames to Twixter. What we need to do is have Final Cut Pro's retime speed, not Twixter's, set to 100% and then hold the last frame and then make the clip as long as we need it to be. To do that, we first make sure that Final Cut Pro 10's playhead is somewhere within the clip. Then we use the Go to Next Edit button to go to the next edit point at the end of the clip. This puts the playhead after the last frame on the timeline, so I can use the Previous Frame button to go back one frame. I can select the clip and then go to Modify from the top menu and Retime, and then select Hold. Now I click on the end of the Retime bar to extend the held frame so that the total duration is as long as we need it to be after retiming with Twixter. If we skim through the clip and see that we need to edit the clip, in order to trim or transition the Twixter clip, we'll need to go back to the main timeline by selecting the arrow or command plus left bracket. Now I can just grab the edge and drag it to where I want it. I can play the result and see that we now have a clip that's four times slower. This is how you can do a simple speed up and slow down with Twixter in Final Cut Pro 10.